Hello, we are uh, Group Green 3, and we were going to present um, for Project 2, problem, uh, one. problem 1, which is the swinging pendulum problem. I am Thomas Williams. I'm Jose Luna. I'm Sui Zhong. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, for how we got our answer, uh, we made a diagram of a before and after the pendulum swing. Before the pendulum swings, it is at some degree, um, both lengths of the rope are the exact same, uh, the same length L. Um, after we release the ball and it swings on the pendulum down and it connects with the other ball, M2, it makes an energy transfer and swings the ball up an unknown distance, HF2. It swings M ball M2 up a uh, unknown distance ball ball m1 remains at a unknown distance hf1 based off of the uh, point that both uh, ropes are tied off as our origin point um, for our potential energy so for our uh, formulas that we use we use potential energy kinetic energy and the elastic collision formula. Potential energy is mgh, kinetic energy is one half mv squared, elastic collision is m1 v1 plus m2 v2, all that initial, equals m1 v1 plus m2 v2, all that final. In order to find uh, the height, we first need to get the velocity. So by finding the velocity, we uh, we found the velocity by uh, making potential energy equal to kinetic energy. We then solve for v. Our v. This is our v final. V final is equal to the square root of m1 times l cosine theta g over one half m1. L cosine theta comes from the initial h1. We found that by taking the cosine of the original degree to get the length of the rope that M1 was initially at. So that's height one initial. Um, height two initial is just L because that was given. Um, so after we can, so we take our final velocity and we plug that back into our original kinetic energy equals potential energy formula, which is the one half mv final squared equals mgh. That's defined using our final velocity. We then solve for h. Using that, we do that for both m1 final and m2 final to find h1 final and h2 final. h1 final is one half m1 times uh, velocity final squared over gh. h2 is one half m2 times velocity final uh, for the second ball, which means it just has an m2 in the velocity final equation over gh. Okay, Jose will now explain. Okay, so the reason why this works is because we use the concept of the conservation of energy. So with the conservation of energy, we know that our potential energy which can be shown in this little tiny diagram right here with a small little tiny pendulum. Uh, depending on how high up the pendulum is, you can see that our little tiny graph here is changing kinetic energy into potential energy. Uh, so with the, conservation of, with the conservation of energy, we know that the potential energy of mass one will have to equal the kinetic energy that, of the point of collision against mass two. And so when we do our elastic collision, we can set our thing, we can set our energies equal to each other, and uh, if both masses are the same, we will get a complete transfer of energy where, where mass one will stay at zero, and mass two will take the kinetic energy and turn it back into potential energy. And we can see that here in this simulation, with two masses of the two, two things of the same mass, with one hitting the other one at rest, completely transferring all of its energy, while the other one stays at rest. Uh, things that will make a change is if, um, right over here, if uh, mass one is smaller than mass two, 
what will, what will happen is mass 2 will, will go up at slightly less of a height, and some of the energy will be transferred back into mass 1, slowly pulling it back, changing its height too. However, if mass 2 is greater than mass 1, or no, no, if mass 1 is greater than mass 2, then the energy, uh, then mass 2 will go up at a greater height, while mass 1 will also go up with it, just a slight bit. And so it will slightly change our variables a little, it will slightly change our outcome a little bit. However, if we still plug everything in, height 1 and height 2 will still both be the same. Uh, same thing goes for velocity as well. Uh, since mass one is, if mass one is greater than mass two, then the velocity of mass two will be a lot higher. If it was smaller than mass two, uh, then the velocity would be a lot slower. Thus, correlating with this and correlating with that, this as well. It's all about conservation, and since we're not losing anything to thermal, or we're not doing anything involving drag or something like that, or friction, um, nothing is going to be lost. All energy will be presented here and here. Another thing, another thing to take into account with the, the, the complete conservation of energy is the conservation of momentum. And so basically if, 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 if our initial momentum is at zero because these are both at rest and we have our mass one falling down and if we set our variables correctly so that up is positive, down is negative, what we'll end up getting is that uh, our our momentum for mass one will be a negative, the momentum for mass two will be a positive, and they will both cancel out because of conservation and become zero, which lines up with our initial momentum also being zero since they both start at rest. And so that is a very big thing that helped us uh, get the rest of our equation down, all of this fancy stuff right here, because if this wasn't true, uh, then we couldn't find velocity final by taking, uh, by taking, we couldn't find velocity of our the final velocity of our masses by just taking the potential energy because uh, conservation wouldn't be there, I guess. And so having this right here and understanding the fundamental that since this is zero, this is negative and this is positive and they're both gonna have to equal zero, that's how we were able to derive our whole equation. And um, I'm going to reflection this problem. So this problem is similar to activity five from presentation with eight. So activity five is about one cube swinging down with an angle. Cat problem gives ideas with M how M1 will act before it collision to M2. And that problem can be also a special case because M2 equal to zero. Um, so it will also give idea of velocity, of final velocity of M1. So the idea of what will happen after collision comes from Studio 9. There is a problem about two cars collision with each other and the kinetic energy are conservation. The collision cars give the idea of how two balls will act after the collision. 